Good morning, traders. Welcome to our trading room. Uh, for my YouTube viewers, as usual, this will be out every Monday morning. We put this out as the weekly outlook. Um, I should warn you, uh, as kind of as you should know, because what I'm going to give you is my views and what I think where it, where it's going to go for the week. Some of the trades will be short term, which uh, I wouldn't encourage you to take. These are trades we're taking in our trading room. So whatever you see here, take take it with a grain of salt. Decide what you want to do with it because there is no one direction, especially if you're a short-term trader. You might be looking for a sell setup, but within a few hours, it's a, it's a buy setup. We will change when we see those views, right? We will change if we see that the setups are changing. If you would like to see how we do that, you can join us. You can join us live. If you want, you can join the group full-time. We have an active group working. People ask me, what is your group? What is your group? Those who know. We are in Workplace. It's a group where we actively participate in Workplace. You're watching all these webinars and Zoom. They're done five times a day at minimum. I'm here at least three times out of the five times. Right? Most times it would start without me and it would end without me. It's an active trading room where we take trades, we identify it, we decide what to do with the trade, we manage them, and we close them. Right. So with that said, uh, if you would like to see us in action, how we do this and how we change everything, send me a Skype message. I do not have a website. Don't ask me why. Uh, it's M-A-N-G-A-L-457. Websites are for selling stuff. I'm not selling you anything. If you would like to learn to trade, you can join us. We have a group where you can learn to trade, right? So send me a Skype message. It's also in the description. And if you're keen on becoming a professional trader and learning to trade correctly, then go ahead. If not, there's a lot of courses selling out there for $200, $300. Go buy one. You can buy a couple of them and you still will be where you are. So one of the things I want to talk to traders about, I think I should mention this because I was involved twice in promoting this. And I think since I was, I would let you know, not promoting, but actually we did promotion with them. These are these new companies growing up like, like, I mean, there are thousands of them out there now. It's a new form of brokerage. Brokers are already considering whether they should move to that new form, these prop firms, where they give you the accounts to trade, right? Because brokers are losing. I spoke to a broker not too long ago, a guy from a broker, and they're losing actually to these companies a lot. Because normally you will have to open an account to the broker. You'll have to have cash to do that, right? So now what they're saying is that you don't have to have cash. You just need to have a small sum of money. You can give us that small sum of money, $100 plus, $50 plus even, and we will give you from a 5 5K account upwards to trade. They will give you a demo account. Nothing is wrong with that. Nothing is illegal with that. They'll give you a demo account, and you have to pass a certain amount of tests for that. Right? Now, the reason this is good for them as a business, 90% of you will fail. That's just a fact. Because it's set up such a way that you really, really have to, you know, you have to be very, very careful how you trade, right? You have to trade really small, like 4 or 5% if you lost, it's over. It's really, really, the, the criterias are there. Nothing is wrong with the criterias. You just, you know, traders, as traders, we have this instinct. We, we, are, we are risk takers, right? If you're a trader, you're a risk taker. So you, you're more inclined to take bigger risk than smaller risk. Smaller risk will bore you. So you might pass the first couple of trades, but then another one you're going to, you know, you're going to leave too long or you're going to take too big a lot size and then that will be the start of the downfall for you. And I think they know that 90% of the traders who buy from them fail. And that's why that business is growing. So instead of people going to brokerage and open a broker account where you have your money solid, right? You're risking $10,000 of your money. You may say, well, let me buy it for $50 and risk $10,000 of their money. So how much $50 you can lose before you actually succeed? I don't know. I don't even know if you'll succeed. But this is a system exist. Now, the warning in this is that if you're taking it, nothing is wrong with it taking. People beat it. People pass it. Is that you really, really have to control your trading, which means you have to use stop loss. You have to be very, very, very um, moderate in your trading, not aggressive, which means don't open too many trades because I've seen traders fail because they had too many trades on, like 0.5% per trade risk. But if you get eight trades on, that's already 4%. And that's enough for you to fail if all those trades go in drawdown. Not necessarily the trades go in losses. They go in drawdown, they will close you. And they will tell you you hit that percentage because they can widen the spread to make you do it. 
So not too many trades, not huge money management. Money management has to be really, really, really small, right? So if you're a trader and you really want to use it, it's a to advantage. If you and you have to be a successful trader too before you do that. You should never buy one of that if you are already haven't used any demo and being successful. So you can take a free demo from any broker, practice, test the broker, out, see how it works, and then if you think you can do it, you can do it there. You'll also have to practice by using their method which means you can't beat the 4%. You can't go into that 4% drawdown. So you'll have to practice using the same criteria you will use to trade there. Otherwise, you will fail. All right? So that's it. Let's move on. Let's start. Dollar index. Dollar index, nothing new. I told you we, we, we weren't in any patterns, and now we might be making. It could have gone up or down. It really didn't make a difference to us which direction it go. We will trade. As you can see, we were buying this because we had a consolidation there. So if we get a consolidation here again today, if this becomes a consolidation, we can buy, we will buy again. It can break the top. But once you break this top, once you break that top, the chances of this coming back here is pretty high, right? So we can, as of now, we still haven't broken that top, which means this could even still come back and retest the low. And this could be one, two, three. So there is no guarantee that this is going to go break the top. It could, but there's no guarantee to that. And there's a very good chance that this might be the one that is the core correction, which means we might still come back with test the low. Now, for the trade of the day, since we still don't have a clear direction as to where it's going to go, we'll just take whatever trade we get today. Right now, this looks like a consolidation for upside. Right? If I'm looking at it in the 15 minutes, it looked like right now we're consolidating here. We're consolidating in this range, and that looks upside, but that could change. As of now, I would take it as a buy setup forming, which means this might just come back here and go up. We'll be looking for a buy somewhere here. Right? So we'll be looking for a buy setup. What would change to give us a sell setup? Well, this one has got to drop really sharp away from this area. And that's an area. It's not a support and resistance. It's not just an area of interest, which means it has to break these lows and then consolidate. And if I get this, we will be selling. Now, there are times when you have such a big correction at the top with a very small impulse and they're reversing, especially when it's at the top of a structure. And this one is at the top of a structure. So we'll see where that goes, right? So take this out. This one, actually, I, this trade itself we didn't take, but I remember taking the silver and the gold. And I hope a lot of my traders got the silver and the gold. I wasn't trading Friday. I was off, but we'll see. So dollar index as of now is still a buy setup which means we don't have a trade, we'll see. Silver, good. Now this is this is the interesting one because we are way at the top there now. And remember, it can still go higher. We still have the possibility to go higher, but we have about three sharp moves that are unfulfilled. I think this is one. This could be a standalone because you do have a, a correction in here. This is another one. So the question is, are we making one of those? Or is this just going to make a flat here and then go back up? And by flat, I mean a bigger correction, something like this. One, two, three. All right. So with the first impulse is there, which means that drop is there. That by itself doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean it's going to continue to drop. It doesn't mean it's going to go up. Traders who tell you that this is the drop to the downside have no idea what they're talking about. And anyone who tell you, well, now we're going to buy because it's going to go back on top of probably pretty much putting you at risk. What we will wait to see is what this does. If this stays in here as a correction, we're selling. If this is the work its way back to the top here, we may or may not buy in this. I don't know. Depends if we get a good setup for that. But if it comes back to the top here, I'll expect it to drop here and then continue up. So we'll just have to wait and see which. But because it's very much at the top there, there's a higher probability for downside. Right? The probability for downside is higher because it's way at the top there. In the 15 minutes, there is no trade setup. All right, we do have this impulse and we're getting a small flag here. Like, so maybe there will be risky trades to the top. We'll look at that afterwards because we don't have any pattern to trade here right now. It's just two pullbacks. Those are not anything that you can trade. So I have to see if I'll get a flat or some kind of a structure here that says upside and we might consider the trade for the upside. But the trade for the upside as of now is correcting this move. How deep it will correct the move will be important. So if we take a trade and it's a shallow correction, which means it's not going. We will get the hell out of that trade really quick. 
we will get out really, really quick. So I am not making a trade call for you. I'm not telling you you should take this. I'm telling you how we would analyze the chart and what we would look for and the directions I likely think. I do think this one is going to stay here longer. Even if it goes sideways like this, it's going to stay longer. It's not going to drop right now. But if it's going upwards, there will be possible trades because this is a big move, actually. So there will be possible trades to the upside. Okay, let's go. So we will probably look for buy setups, but I will be short term. The bigger trade might be to the downside. Gold, same thing. I don't even have to explain. Same thing. We'll probably look for trades. To, I think there's a likelihood we'll get trades to upside on the gold because this this first impulse and the correction is huge. I could see this going up there. I can see it coming back here and I can see it continue to go because there's probably a flat forming here. So we will start to look at this for possible upside and see how high it comes back into this one. If it stays lower, then we drop. If it goes back up, we will come back down, but only after that, we're going to continue to go up. Could this be the start of the drop? It could be. So let's see how deep this correction comes back here. There's a lot more. On the, the idea is to look at patterns, see how that pattern behaves, what the pattern is, and where the direction is going to go. So right now, when there is no complete pattern, it's hard to tell which direction they're going to go. It doesn't mean we don't know what direction is going to go. We don't know what we're trading. We just have to wait for that pattern to complete itself. Euro? Yeah, so Euro dropped. I think Euro was, was a tricky one because... I was expecting this to go up a little more than come, but this would have been a sell and this would have been a sell. So there'll be two sell setups once you break the low. Any consolidation under the low would be a sell. This is kind of a small correction. It should have been an impulse. It's not, but this correction is telling me there's more downside. Right, the way this is correcting, it's telling me there's more downside coming. So I wouldn't be surprised if we come and retest this low. Right? Now, this is still a very sharp correction. But this move down is not a corrective structure. It's really, really sharp. So that means that this would be either a standalone or it would be some kind of a pattern in the future. Would I go back to this original running flat here? If you remember, we had that as a running flat. I think we could relook at that. We might relook at that, whether this is the running flat and that is a smaller correction. In that case, you have one, two, three. We did break this low. So are we going to look at this as one, two, three, or are we going to make a bigger pattern here? See, there are more, more versions to how this, because this has the biggest, if we put this running flat, this is a really huge one. So without giving you a lecture and wave analysis, there's a high probability this could go back to the top there as well. Not necessarily to the top, but it could actually repeat that structure, come here, do this, go there, and then drop, which would leave this now as a bigger running flat. Right? So there are possibilities that will develop. And depending on which one we're getting, we'll take a trade. But the most immediate trade now is a sell setup. We actually have a sell setup. So although there's divergence and there's a likelihood this might just drop and break the low, you can actually put a sell entry here now. That is an actual sell that I would put on. So that would be a trade for a sell if it drops right now. Now, if it drops, we'll be careful because there are, chance, there are times when it will just drop like this and then start to reverse. This would be our exit strategy, should that happen. Well, it's not like it's dropping you immediately. There are criteria to which we look for as to when and how we're going to close that trade. Pong, I think the same goes for the Pong. It's a sell setup. It's an active sell. And the same way, you can even put it here. No, probably here because a running flat could form here. The same criteria goes for this. The same thing that you do have. This doesn't have divergent, by the way. So this one is a big, this is the top of that move. I don't think this needs to go back up. I think this could be showing us a case that where we're dropping all the way to the bottom here because that would complete this pattern. See, this is a one, two, three. It's pretty good. Remember what I told you guys, when does it drop there and it break that up, we could come down back for this one. So I wouldn't be surprised if we we're coming down here. And that means that if this is coming here, it's either going to be a pong drop or it could be a dollar movement, which means we're going to have, in all of them, we're going to have downside. So right now, this is a sell set up to the downside. We'll see whether that happens. Unlike the dollar, this one doesn't necessarily have to break the low and go back up. It could continue to drop. But we'll put this as a sell setup. Maybe I'll change where, where the entry order is. As of now, the entry order stays there. The entry order stays under the low. If we get a flag before that, we'll sell it. But if this goes higher, and I think it will go higher, if this goes higher, we'll move that entry order up. So we get a better entry to sell. 
There's actually a very small 15 minutes by setup. We'll consider that when we go in the room because I can see a flat and they're making a flag. So that means there's a good chance we might get a buy. Aussie, you can put this as an active sell tool. Aussie, we don't have a sell setup as yet, especially since this is the only pullback in it. There's a good chance it has to come back here, go back up, and then we'll consider if we get a sell setup. Now, Aussie structurally should go back one more. We're expecting this to go up one more, but it seemed that was in this pattern. It seems that pattern ended here because they had a complete pattern. We definitely had a complete pattern here before we got that pullback. But now that that pullback dropped, all of these are no longer going to happen. right? We're looking whether this would make another flat there. And that didn't happen. So you can take it out. That, that's a sharp pullback. So I'm not sure we don't have anything to go with it yet. We'll figure that later on. Because I don't see a, I don't see a contracting flat here. This is just one pullback. And I don't see it fitting in this pattern. This is a complete pattern there. So it means somewhere along the line, this is really sharp draw, but somewhere along the line, we might get a sharp pullback. All right, we'll see where that is. We don't have a buy or sell set up here right now. I'll not put a sell here until I get a complete pattern. But the bigger picture looks downside. All right, the bigger picture does look downside. We broke this low. Now, we're still expecting one of this up. And that means it can come all the way to the bottom here before that happens, right? So we can see this drop one more here and then go back up because this is the big flat inside now, right? That was the one we identified. So this is a one, two, three. That means this makes a one down like this move. And there's a good chance you get a one, two, three back to the top before you drop. If we break that low, we don't have to retest the top. So can this continue to drop? It can, but I think that's pretty rare. Most times they'll can, they'll just complete that flat like this one. See, they'll complete the flat and then it's going to drop. But let's see if we get that trade. So if you remember the Aussie, and the reason I'm leaving is if you remember when Aussie was here in the start turn, we said there's a high probability of this coming back to the low. That was this arrow. And then when we started to make this, there was a, we, from there, I actually, we removed this one. We should have actually put that back. From this point here, we were telling you this was going to come to the low. But after it makes this flat, we figure out that there's a chance it's going to go back up there and then come to the low. So, and by the way, I also have a forecast for upside. You can take a snapshot and keep it because if you're seeing this for the first time, you may say, well, this looks really strange. Why you think it's going to come somewhere here and turn? You'll learn why, right? Remember, we don't know what the news events are going to be. We never know what they're going to be. But that has nothing to do with how the market is moving. If you can make forecasts without knowing what the news event is going to be, it means that you can the news event will not be reliable in how the market moves. Right? It's not, it's it's the moment in time when they move the market. And that's why we get these trades like this. See that trade there? That's news event trade. So it's the moment in time that the market moves, but not how it's going to move. Right. You ever seen a news that's super positive and that currency drops? Or a news that's super negative for that currency and the currency takes off like a rocket and you're like, what the hell just happened? Well, that's because it's the momentum time and not the reaction to the news itself. Okay, so New Zealand, let's see. New Zealand is coming down. I'm still expecting because of this, we were expecting one more. But if we go with this as, as, a, as a correction of its own, Let's say this is a correction of its own. It's a bit sharp, but let's go with that. Then New Zealand doesn't need to go back up. On the big picture, we don't need to go back up until we break this low. So if we take this out, let's assume it's not going to go back up. It could still go, but let's assume it's not going to go back up. Any sell setup we get here, we'll take. Because New Zealand doesn't have to go back up for any specific reason. There's All of them are showing you downside, right? This was downside forecast. This was downside forecast. This is downside forecast. Now, it might have gone up a little here for that, but that's gone already. So sell setup, any sell setup we get, we'll take. If we get a buy setup, we'll have to consider the pattern and then decide. But any sell setup here will go. Now, this is only the first impulse up here, and I think this one might match this. Now, there's no big correction in here except for this, so we'll still have to see whether that's a correction of its own. There is a flag inside in the 15 minutes. You can see there's a small flag there, so that could be a standalone correction, impulse correction drop. Let's see what happens here. This one already broke the low. So when you break the low, you want to see whether this is becoming a bigger correction here or this is becoming a flag at the top there. Flag means we'll buy. That is something like this. We'll buy that. But it's a better flag to buy because you're coming from a low. This one didn't break the low, right? So this is the impulse correction that dropped. Let's see what happens here. 
Right now, it could still be a sell setup. I wouldn't put a sell here as yet. Let's see. If, let's get a pattern and then we'll put a sell. Could it be an expanding flat? Let's say this for an expanding flat. Well, any flag in here would be a sell or once it break below, make a flag, we sell. So right now, there is no setup and then you see that. CAD, upside, they didn't pull back. So we'll probably see if they get a pullback here, but it's still a buy setup. I still think we can go with the buy. Just wait for, it's actually making a correction here for the buy. We can ignore this one for now. We'll come back to that. This is still a buy setup. So as of now, it's a buy setup. I don't see any reason why we should sell it. We need to we need to see if this is going to drop much more first. If this one is going to drop more and then make a correction and then we'll go into sell. But right now it's upside. We are above this top. And as long as you stay there, I think, well, that was in our trading room. We're looking for this to go back up. I think I explained this pattern in my last two videos, if you watch them. So when it comes there, the probability of this coming back down is really, really, really high. So here's the thing. If you ask me the chance, we have the chance of this coming back here and then go up, right? We're testing this low and go back. We also have the chance that it just break out and go to that top. So this was the move we were looking for, this one here. That already happened. The one we're looking for, is it going to come down or is it going to go up? Now, if I had to, I mean, I don't bet, but if I had to bet, I'll put 90% chance of downside, 10% chance of upside, right? But that's just guessing because I could be wrong. Based on patterns, the more likely thing is downside. So can it go up and break that top then turn? Absolutely. That would be a running flat. That would even be much more amazing because when it comes to the bottom, we know it will go back up. There is a buy setup forming here. We don't need to break anything anymore. This thing could turn right now if it wants, but we don't have a setup where it's turning. I think this is more important. If you're watching the video up to this point, then you're deserving to have a little a little educational part here. Traders like to try to get in the move early, right? Oh, look, I picked the top. Look, it's going amazing. Well, here's the educational part. Don't do it. I don't care how seasoned the traders you are. You can never pick the top and bottom. If you have done that and it had happened where you click a trade and it turns out that was the top, thank God it happened. Don't do it again. No one knows where the top and the bottom is, especially in most structures. Because where you think the top is could be disaster if that is not the top for you, especially if you're not using a stop loss because you think that's the top. Where would your stop loss be? You don't know. If you think it's the bottom, then you wouldn't also know where to put your, your stop loss. So the best thing to do is not to do that. Don't assume you know where. Wait for, wait for whatever setups you're using to trade. I don't care what your analysis is, but whatever setups you're using to trade, wait for that to actually set up there before you trade. Your trading has to be divided in different parts, right? If you're not doing this in your trading, you are one of the 90% of people who will eventually lose your account. You have to first have the analysis. When you've made the analysis, it will create a bias in you. That bias will decide whether you think it's going up or goes down. Now, that is what you're going to trade your bias. Right? You have to first create that bias. You have to make that as a forecast where you think it's going to go. Because for you to click a trade, you have to pick a direction. And that is your bias. What creates the bias will be your analysis. Whatever type of analysis you're using, that's up to you. We use wave analysis to create that bias. And then when you decide it's going to go up or down, you will have to have a strategy of how you're going to trade that. right? Like, how am I going to make that trade? Where would I put my entry? Where is a safe place to put the entry? Where is a good place to put the stop? Right, That's your strategy, where you're going to enter and how you're going to exit should it, you know, should it not go the way you expect it to go? And then comes once you're in the trade, comes trade management. I think this is the most important part in your trading. And this is the most ignored part by most gurus out there on, on YouTube. You know why this is ignored by them? This is the hard part. This is easy. This is easy. It doesn't matter what method of analysis you're using, support and resistance, wave analysis, news, whatever. Point your finger in the air, or, you know, or throw up a ball and see how it comes down. It depends. It doesn't matter. Right, that's the easy part. You heard something in the news, you read something in the internet, all of that create biases. So that's that's pretty easy. A strategy is not that difficult because you can say, okay, I'll wait for this to happen and I'll put the entry here. I'll put the stop here. Or I'll wait for this to happen. I'll put the entry here and put the stop here. Or I wouldn't wait for anything. I'll sell it immediately and put a stop 20 pips away. Right? That's a strategy. 
If you use it, nothing's wrong with that. Here is the problem. What if it doesn't happen? What do you do? And that's where trade management comes in. And this is where 90% of the traders fail. It's not about the analysis and the strategy. They don't fail with that. They fail with managing their trades correctly. That is where 90% of you lose. Now, this is where you have to be careful. And the reason this is important, because it will have to depend on your analysis, right? If your analysis was showing it's going to go down because of X, Y, Z, and then you're looking at it come a little down, but then it started to turn, and you're saying, wait a second, X, Y, Z is not playing out the way I expect it to play out. I've got to get out of that. Now, that depends on whether you know how it should play out when it's X, Y, Z. And if it doesn't play out that way, you have to make a decision what you're going to do with the trade. And if you make the right decisions, and if you have a good money management or strategy, trade management strategy, 80% of your losses will be closed for positive break-even. About 10% for negative break-even. And maybe 10% of them you will close for a little bigger loss than normal, but maybe not hit your stop loss. And those are the trades that you will lose in any case if you leave them alone. And that is why trade management is so important. Like I said, if you watch so far, you learn something. Let's go now. We're looking for a buy setup. Now, since we know that CAD is at a turning point, if I get a sell setup, I'll take it. But there is no sell setup. I want to see this come back here. I want to see it come back here. And then we're looking for a buy. Now, it might play out much different than what I draw. This could stay here for a long time. Do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. do, And then come here and you're going to say, well, it didn't do what he said it's going to do. But that's okay. I'll still be buying it here. Right? So what I just drew for you is the simplest possible pattern that could form. It doesn't mean it's going to make the simplest pattern. But I'm not going to draw a long drawn out possibility of what it could, you know, what all the patterns are going to be before we decide what to do. That's something we do in the group as we update our charts every couple hours. Swiss. Yeah, this was the upside and that was correct. The downside and the upside both happened. Actually, they came down back again and they went up back again, which is good. It's still a correction. It's just a more complex one. So take this out here and take this out. And all you can see is that you've got a more complex corrective structure here. So if I'm right about that, and we are right about that, what should happen next is we should get this one. Come on. We should get this move down. Either from here or from here, depending on how you look at that pattern, contracting flat or regular flat. So we should get a move down that looks similar to that. And then that would mean upside. You can see we already have big upside here. It's a big flat like this. So after that, we'll get a move that should probably take off like this. We look for a sell setup first. So let's see what happens there. Let's see if we get any sell setup. We'll take it. Nope, no sell setup as yet. But if we do get a sell setup, we'll take it. We look for a sell and then we look for a buy setup. Yen. Yen went up. This one was a small running flat. It actually came back pretty deep here. I don't see where to put this. We can't put it with this one, neither with this one. So we would assume that we'll get another running flat here because this is a big flat in here. This would have been a good buy setup. Maybe a cautious one because you already have this here. So what we are expecting is one more move down here and then up. Pretty similar to what we have on the Swiss, dollar Swiss. Right, there's a good chance this move repeats itself here and then go up one more. We'll have to break that up again. So we can look for a sell setup here. If you get a buy setup, you can still take it. There's a chance it's going to go one more up. I can see the possibility for a small running flat here. One more up, then make this trade and then go back up. This one, one, two, three. So if we get that, we'll go, this is a running flat. And then up. this running flat is inside the structure. So there's a good chance we're going to get it downside. We'll wait for it. Short term sell, then buy. Euro yen. I think this was a good one. We can make an argument that this was the running flat. Make an argument for that as a running flat because you have a flat here, a smaller version of a flat in there. And this is continuing to go up. Let's see where this should go. That's a sharp move up. 
Okay, it all depends on how you look at this pattern. We did break this low, so we'll have to take all of this as correction, right? We never really got this one because it, it made the drop, but it didn't retest the top. So that, that doesn't go with this. This was a sell set up under here when we were selling in the news. So if you took any sell here, you did well. This is really sharp and it just stands alone. Would we look at this as an expanding flat? So the question is now, since that is so sharp, are we going to look at this as a possible expanding flat? If that is a possibility. If that's an expanding flat, then we will come up here, come back down, and then go up. Right? It's just going to make a really big correction. So if you're looking at this as a possible expanding flat, this one needs to come back here, probably come back to the bottom here, and then make a new high. Right? So this is a possibility that could happen. If that is not the case, this one is just going to break out, and we'll have to figure out what to do with that. Because I don't see. You see this one, they give you that complete flat, come here and then go. So I'm, we're always expecting to see that, that pullback. I would go with a con, with a um, expanding flat for now. Let's take this trade up there. Let's look for a buy set up to the top, and then we'll see where that takes us. So there's at least one more move to the top. Wait for a flag, wait for something. Buy there was a flat here. This, like I said, there was a running flat here. But probably didn't get a wait for any correction here, and then we go for the buy. So we'll be looking for a buy set up here. Euro Swiss, one more up. I definitely didn't have that one, so I think this could be it. That, and we'll go one more down. I'll go with a running flat because this one is relatively sharp. So if we get a move up like that, we're looking for a sell setup. Can we buy this? If you get a sell setup, you can buy. I'll go with this as a running flat and then downside. Right. So this one will come back. We'll put this again together, and then we'll see where where the the, the bottom one you know fits. It's definitely not fitting with this. This looks like the top, at least for a bigger correction. So buy setup. For now, we're looking for buy setup because we still have to go a lot more up. Even if we're making this move here, it's still a buy setup. If we're doing this, it's still a buy setup. Look for the buy setup. You're in New Zealand. I'll go through this one. Upside. I don't think they're turning as yet. We need to move this size. So we're still not turning. I think this is going to go up one more. I expect a move up more there and then probably come down, making this the flat drop. Now, if it stays here as a flag, we'll sell. We'll go with that as a running flat. So if you get a flag here, you sell. We're looking for the sell setup, not the buy so much. So like I said, if we get a flag here right now, if this thing makes a flag here, we're going to sell. Look for a sell setup. That's the most immediate one. If they're making a flat top side, you wouldn't get a buy setup. You wouldn't get a really good buy trade. Right? So for my YouTube viewers, if you meet this point, then you would like to have all of these here. Join us live. Send me a Skype message. Skype is in the um, in the description at the very top. Send me a message and you can join us live. But that said, I'm going to show some more of these. Natural gas. Downside, I think natural gas should make one more move up so we can look for a buy setup. There is no buy setup here, but we'll keep an eye on that. If this stays here very long, then we'll look for a sell. But as of now, it's a buy setup. Oil. Okay, we broke the top. This didn't come down that much. It actually went up, break the top. So can we make an assessment that this is the top now? Let me take this out. It came down, but they didn't break the low. We we, we needed to break that low, I think. Otherwise, this is still a correction. We're still in the correction. So let's take this out and let's take this out. And let's see if we broke the top. We didn't really break it, but we tagged it. So can we look at all of this as correction? Yeah, we can. Take this out. We just have to relook at how we look at it, right? So this would be one move up. This would be one, two, three, four, five. And this would be one, two, three. This one is actually really sharp. So unless we can put that with something else, that is one, two, three, one, two, three. You could actually go with this. You could make an argument for this, right? One, two, three. A running flat in there, and you can go with one, two, three for this one. So that leaves this as the next impulse up. So we're looking for this move down, which is already happening. It's already here. I don't think we necessarily need to go more because we kind of tag the top, which means you can go with a running flat. If we get a buy set up here, we'll take that trade. But if it stays here longer, we'll go with the sell. 
So if it's a flat, we sell. If it's a flag, we buy. Right now, it's a flag. Right now, we're getting a 15 minutes flag, and that's a buy setup. If it stays as a flag, if this stays here as a flag, it has to retest the slow. We're looking for a trade that would come, looking for a pullback that would bring you back to about here. If it stays in that range, we're buying. If it comes below that, we look for sell setups. So, US 30. Actually, I don't know if any of my traders took that trade, but that was a good sell setup. And we can put all of this in here as a correction. All right, so that turned out to be a good sell setup. Let's see if we get another good sell setup here. Yeah, this was a good sell. This was actually an active trade because we assumed that that is a correction. If you took it, I hope you made a lot of money on Friday. So this is going to make another flat here and downside. You can assume that this is going to come back here or there, make another flat, and that would be a sell setup. And this should be the same. Right, that was a sell there if you took the trade. If you didn't, this one probably you didn't take because of this pattern. Um, I would make an assumption that we're still in this correction. This just became a bigger correction here, this whole one. Because we didn't break the top, right? So I wouldn't sell here now. We'll actually wait for it to come back, let it come and break this low. It will probably make a flag here, break this low. And then there's a good chance you're going back up because this looks like a one, two, three. This looks like a one. We'll have to put all of this as two and then three. So we'll have to look for some kind of an expanding flat in that. So it'd be one, two, three, four, five, and then it can still go up. I don't think it's downside. If it's a leading diagonal, let's see if that's possible. You can make an argument for a leading diagonal, but I don't think it is. So here's what you want. If we get a sell set up here, we'll take this trade to break the low. Right, it'll break that low, and then we'll see how far it goes. Because if it goes really far, then we'll assume that this here was the leading diagonal. That's the bigger correction, and this is the drop. Right, This would be like a one, two, three, four, five. So if you go and you put it like this, as a leading diagonal like this, right? put this one here, you can make an argument for one, two, three, four, five. This is the bigger flat, and this could drop. So if we get a sell setup, we'll take it, assuming it's a leading, leading. If it's not a leading diagonal and it's just making a huge correction, this would just come and break the low and then start to go back up. I think we have enough to, to get rid of that trade, but take the trade because we've seen this case where you have that leading. You see, this one is outside. It's outside the structure. And that's a good sign of that. That's a good sign of what a leading diagonal would look like with a huge flat here. So that's a good sign for a leading diagonal. We look for sell setups. But so in, in the case that we can really manage that trade properly, should it not go? If you have to exit and re-enter, I don't care. So we look for a sell setup here. Should it go back up? We don't have a buy. You don't have a buy setup there, right? Let's see this. Okay. It's dropping nice. We expect a drop. Let it pull back one more and then sell. This is actually a flat here. This piece is a flat by itself. See, there's a correction in there. So if this makes a flat here, go with the sell. How far we expect that to go? Well, we're expecting it to come back like this. This is the trade we're looking for. If we're wrong about that, it will totally drop. But let's go with this first. Look for a sell setup. Okay, we'll we'll do the rest when we think. Bitcoin. Dropping. That one we were expecting only to go break this stop here. And then turn, right? So if, if shit should go there, then it will just go to there and then drop, right? See, this one is drop. So now that we drop, now that it didn't do that, it means this is the impulse down. So take this out. And you got one, two, three. Okay, let's go with that one, two, three. Now we have one, two, three. And this is where it gets interesting. We broke the low, right? This low is broken. So at this point, this can either reverse, go way back, all make a new high. This could totally go and make a new high. Or if they correct here, it drop more. Correct, drop, correct, drop. So which one? Well, at this point, we don't know because this pullback is pretty deep. If you ask me, it looks more upside than normal. In a normal pattern, that would be more upside. If you took this buy here, get it to break even because it's going to pull back like this. And then we'll take this buy. We'll try to get this buy to the upside and see where that takes you. 
right? Now, the worst case is that it comes and it breaks the stop, make a bigger correction for downside. But I think the buy is worth it because from this point here, yes, you can go straight back up. ATH, no, more downside. This one actually did drop and this was all the correction. So you, I'll put it from this point here. I'll put this one here as an expanding flat in the middle. And I'll go with this as an expanding flat. So we'll go with this here. One, two, three. One, two, three. This is the top. This is dropping. And this should probably go more. I think there's more downside we're expecting. Yep. Well, again, it could be a one, two, three for one more up there. But it, this is most likely going to drop. Bigger picture is most likely downside. Right? Same thing. We had this huge run here. And then it dropped. So we can expect this to drop more. I don't expect it to go up a lot more. But let's see what setup we get here. If we get sell setups, we go for sells. Most likely, you're going to get sell setups, which means keep your eyes on Bitcoin. It will drop most likely. And XRP. So we came and we broke the low. Remember, what was the thing? This thing is going to drop and break this low. All right, as a forecast. And then from the bottom here, you should start to look for your buy setups, which is from the bottom here, right? Now, I put it there because I think it's going to break the low some more. Now, it just tipped the low and it's going back up. So can we assume that this is it and this one is starting to make that up move here now again back to the top there? We did break the low. There's no criteria as to how far you have to break the low by. But that means if we get by setups, we take it. If we don't, we go there. So if you're watching, if you've managed to watch this far on your YouTube, you just learned something. Those breaking of those lows are pretty important regardless of what anybody might have tell you anywhere else. I think one guy made a video saying he don't understand why I'm talking about breaking the low and how is that has no importance. Well, like I said, limited knowledge is dangerous. So what we're going to look for here is what's happening here now. Any buy setup. Actually, if any of my traders bought this, you did excellent. Keep an eye on it. This still looks like it can go up, right? Put it to break even should they decide to go back deeper, you know, like this and then drop. That possibility exists, but... Let's look for buy setups. Let's expect them to make a bigger flag and then go for it, or bigger flat and then go for the buy. ADA, more downside. Should this go more? Let's see. Or did this reach the limit as well? We're expect I was expecting this to actually go more, go higher, because this could have been all, but it looks like they're going to retest the low. I'll take this out. So this one didn't stop here and go back up. It actually is going much lower, which means we will retest this low here most likely. That is all for the upside. This will retest the low. And I can take this out now. They're, 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 the purpose of those were already fulfilled. The breakout from there. Now the question is whether we're going to retest the low and then go. I think that that's possible. It looks like they're trying to do that. So this will come here, retest this low. And then go back up. This could be a correction of itself. And nothing's wrong with that. Let's see if we're turning. Go to the four hours. No turning is yet. Go to the one hour. If it is turning, wait for a complete pattern here and buy. So what you want to see is you want to see this makes a flat here, right? If it stays in that range, we are buying. If it comes lower, assume it's going to drop more. BNB, probably the same thing. This came down and this could go back up. I think this one could go back up there because we'll go with this flat here first. And it's actually going back up. So it's a short-term buy. I would not probably trade it. It's not worth it. And let's go. I'm going to do one more and then we're going to dash. Yep, they broke the low. So actually this came much lower, which means that running flat is incorrect. Right? That didn't make a running flat there. Take this out. And if the running flat is incorrect, then this piece is incorrect, which means this is all the correction or we go back with an expanding flat. So we would have to go back. To, I think the original one we had was an expanding flat. Then we change it when the sharp move happened. But we don't have anything for this, which is strange. Can we go with this as some kind of a contracting flat here? That might be the only option. Unless this makes one more here and drop, then we'll go with a running flat, which means this could probably work its way back to the top here. Go with a running flat, drop one more. So that leaves us with this sharp move. Well, unless we put it like this, where this is a one, two, three, and this is one, two, three, then this piece makes sense and this piece makes sense. 
So downside, right? We didn't break this low. So this would probably just go here and come back and break the low. Most likely we're gonna break the low. All right, we need to break this low to confirm downside. And right, if we think all of this is gonna go down more, needs to break this low. And I think we'll do that. I think this will come here, probably just go back up to the top there, break the low. Make a running flat. This might most likely be a running flat. Break this low and then go back up. Should it go back from here? Would we look at this as an expanding flat? Let's say this one here. One, two, three, and then go back up there and come back here. It will come back. If this is an expanding flat, then we go up, we're coming back. So you can look for a buy setup short term. I'm going to put this one. I'll, I'll go with this running flat. So first, we want to see if this is a running flat, and you want to exclude this as a running flat. So we're going to look for a move up back like this first. And if it goes higher, then we'll go with the expanding flat. Look for short-term buy setups here. And if it goes much higher, then we'll go with this as an expanding flat. One, two, three. I think the ex both, both will be possible, the expanding flat as well as this expanding flat. Both of those are possible. Right, because this could be a correction and so on. This thing has a lot of corrections, so almost any part of these would make a pattern. Just wait for it. Let's see which one. Look for buy setups, at least short-term buy setups. So, okay, guys, I think that's it. If you're on YouTube and you're watching us, if you're not part of the group, trade with care. Have a good week ahead of you. Make some money and see all of you next week. Take care. Bye. Stop the recording.